Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Blender Side Quest. In today's episode, we are going to be making this procedural bricking setup. If you do not want to follow along, there's project files available for download in the description. In addition to the bricking setup, there's also an isoline setup which will let you rotate it along whatever axis and create amazing visuals. Now, I also want to thank my patrons for supporting this channel. And without wasting any more time, you should probably like and subscribe this video. And I should move on with the tutorial. So here we are in Blender and this is the node group that we'll be creating from scratch today. But one thing that I'll mention to you before is that everything that we'll be going to do is going to revolve around the mesh boolean node. And which is why this is going to be a little slower than the algorithm based approach. Which is possible, but I think you need for loop to do it. Maybe someone can do it without it, but this is a hack. So let's move on with it. Here I'm in Blender, the first thing that you'll be needing is a mesh and this is a napoleon statue from 3dscans.net you can get it for free from there and in the geometry node the first node i'll be adding is the bounding box node so the things that i need from the bounding box node is a the minimum maximum position values which are going to be very useful as you'll notice and b it's also going to provide me with the grid that we are going to use to cut our mesh with so to create that grid we are going to delete the faces and you could use index because there are six faces you could just cycle through six numbers and you'll find one but here's something you might be interested in let's add a normal node and let's add a dot product vector math node now if you take a vector that's pointing uh, upward like 0, 0, 001 and if you take another vector that's pointing upward like 0, 0, 003 now they may differ in magnitude but, but they are facing the same direction so if you do a dot product of these two vectors the answer will be one any two vectors that are facing the same direction in 3d space if you dot product them the answer will be one so if i do a dot product between 0 0 1 and compare it to one what this is effectively doing is it's deleting the face that's normal is pointing upwards but if i change it to negative one now it's leading the face whose normal is pointing downwards we want the downward uh, facing face so what i'm going to do is add a not node oh, boolean math node and change it to not so here we have our base grid we're going to instance this grid on a curve now we need a curve so we'll add a curve line node and the starting and the ending points are meant to be the base of the mesh and the top of the mesh. You can easily find that by the minimum and the maximum value of the curve line. If we turn the modifier on and off, you'll notice that the curve's bottom line is on the base of the mesh and the top point is in the top of the mesh. But the curve is slanted. It's because the minimum is also in negative x and y direction the maximum is also in positive x and y direction which is why the curve line is slanted but we want the curve line to be centered by which i mean that we need to take those points and move it to the center of the grid and we don't want the z value of those points to change because that will change the height of our curve now solving that is pretty easy i take the base geometry that is the base grid i add another bounding box node after it i take the minimum value i add it to the maximum value i scale it with 0 0.5 now what do we get when we add the minimum and maximum values and divide them by two we get the midpoint of this grid and we're going to use the midpoint of this grid to set position of the curve line so let me add a separate xyz and a combine xyz we need the x offset we need the y offset but we need the z offset to remain the same so i'm going to add a position node uh, another separate xyz node i'm going to plug the z into the combine z i'm going to select all of these including the bounding box let's press ctrl g we'll group them take the combine xyz plug it out of the group output and let's add a set position to the curve line let's disable the viewer if i take this midpoint vector and plug it into the position of a curve this will straighten our curve and now if i turn it off and on you'll notice that the curve line is from this bottom of the mesh to the top of the mesh and also centered to the mesh okay so now comes the 
part where we instance a grid on this curve. I'm going to use an instance on point node and I'm going to use a delete geometry as the instance. If we have the grid instance on the bottom of the curve and on the top of the curve because there are only two points in a curve. So what we can do is add a resample curve and you could change the count manually but if you change it to length and plug the length into the input value you now effectively have a control outside the node group to uh, basically control the height of your bricks because the distance between these is effectively the height of your bricks right so yeah you, you can now play with these these values outside one thing that you'll notice that we've overlooked is that if i turn it off and if i move my mesh below the origin or, or offset it from the origin and if i turn it back on you'll notice that our grids do not match our mesh. Why is that? That is because now if I view my delete geometry uh, base grid, it is off centered. It is away from the origin, which means its origin still lies on the world origin, but uh, the mesh is effectively away from the origin, which is why when I instance it on the point of our curve, it takes that offset and that then gets instanced. So let's solve the offset problem. For that, we need to recenter our grid. And to recenter our grid, we've already done it with the curve line. We need to find the distance between the center of the grid to the origin and move it by that distance. Let's take our grid, add a bounding box node, add the minimum maximum values, scale them by 0 0.5. This gives me the center of my grid. We need to find its distance from the origin. Let's add a vector math subtract node, plug this into the second ve vector and the world origin is 0, 0, 0. So this node now gives me the distance between them. So let's add a set position node after this and let's plug this into the offset. And there we go. If I turn it on and off, you'll see that the grids are now aligned with our mesh wherever I move it works just fine so now that we have our slicers we need a mesh boolean node and let's plug our original geometry into mesh one let's plug our instances in mesh two and if i plug this into the group output we've effectively sliced our mesh into equal steps and the distance between those steps is determined out of this node group using this length which should be actually named height but we'll do it later if i change it there we go it works just fine and it's fast enough for you know uh, a mesh boolean effect and change them from outside but i don't think we'll be needing them in this now another thing that you'll notice as an error or as an artifact whatever you want to call it that when you reduce the value to like 0 0.05 there'll be these smaller meshes uh, islands that you don't really need i mean how many bricks can you actually fit in that you know one two three why would you need that so what you can do is first of all let's convert my mesh to a curve this will effectively delete the faces between our edges and we'll still have these uh, smaller islands and to delete them i'll add a delete geometry node set it to spline i'll add a spline length node take the length and use a less than node after it and plug the result into delete geometry node now you can effectively control the length of the splines that you'll be need now you can effectively now you can now you can effectively control the maximum or the minimum length of spline that needs to be to be in your scene. For example, this right here, if I change the value from zero to one, you'll notice that it's been deleted and now we don't have to worry about it. So, because there we have our isolines set up in our scene, not actually isolines, but you know, sort of just for the position value in um, the Z direction. So next thing that you can add is a set spline cyclic node 
this uh, after setting it to cyclic you could create a circular uh, offset animation of the instances it won't work in the napoleon case because the mesh is very jagged but it'll work in smoother surfaces let's add a resample curve i'm going to set it to length and remember when we used the resample curve before and plugged it into the group output and it controlled the height of our bricks now this resample curve if you plug it into a group input and this now you can play with it outside of our node loop this will effectively uh, control the length of your brick think about it the curve has certain number of points if you can change the number of points depending upon the length uh, those points are from each other that is effectively the length of your bricks now another sort of uh, debug thing that you can do after this is set curve normal load and set it to z up just to be sure that your curves aren't twisted i don't think they will be but just to be sure next thing that i need to do is change these curves into points i'm going to add a curve to points node and set it to length and this length value must be equal to the length of brick you can notice if i change it to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 the points are now 0.3 meters apart now what i'm going to do is add an instance on points node and for instance i'm going to use a cube now let's add a combine xyz node the x is supposed to be my length if i'm not wrong and the z is supposed to be my height and y is our width let's just plug it in call it width we'll do it later right now all our bricks are facing forward because the rotation is zero 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 and for them to face along with the normals of our curve it's as simple as taking this normal from curve to points adding a euler to vector node taking the normal into the vector and rotation into the rotation changing it to y because yeah and there we go we have our very basic breaking setup you can change the height from outside the node group you can change the length from outside the node group you can change the uh, width from outside the node group and there we go we have our basic breaking setup everything after this is just puff you can add to the effect you can subtract from the effect you can make it your own by changing some of the values oh here's something that i missed sometimes the slices that we made are open and it looks uh, weird that slice is not rendered in the end so you can add a merge by distance node so that those ends of those uh, meshes meet and can, you can create a cyclic curve that's it for this episode guys i hope you liked it the project files are again available for download in the description thanks for watching until next time goodbye